Hello, crochet friends, it's me, Jonah, and today I'm gonna take you step by step through how to make this amazing and super quick braided puff stitch crochet cowl. You will fall in love with this cowl for a plethora of reasons. Let's start out with the fact that, of course, it uses a super bulky six, nice and chunky and warm for your nice, cool, very cold winters. It'll keep you nice and warm. And number two, you can use up any cakes you have lying around. For this sample, I used one sprinkle cake and the speckled effect that it has is just fantastic and I'm in love with it. And you also have this offset V so that they align with each other. And it's also just another element of texture. And of course, it's really quick and a fast make. So that means since the holidays are rolling around, it's the perfect last minute gift and it's a stash buster. What a better combination. And of course, I used the sprinkle cake for this sample, but a great substitute would be Bernat Softy Chunky. You just need one ball if it's a big ball. And if you're gonna use a small ball, you'll need three. But if you don't have a super bulky six, just use something else from your stash. You can hold two fives together or two thicker fours. This is Red Heart's gemstone, by the way. And really, the world is your oyster when it comes to this pattern, because I'll also be showing you the multiples, so you can make it bigger or smaller, taller or shorter, whatever you'd like. And to accompany your yarn, you'll need a pair of scissors, these are my Fiskars, and a 10 millimeter crochet hook. I'll be using my Ferrell's Virgo Streamline Swirl, so comfortable in your hand. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, here I am. I have my tools, and so you can see my stitches. I'll be using a gorgeous teal color of a super bulky six weight yarn. And now that you have the cowl up close, you can really see the texture. These braided V puffs, and that's exactly what I'll be showing you how to make today. But before I begin, I want to let you know exactly what I'll be teaching you. I'll be teaching you how to start out with the chain right here and the multiples. Then I'll be teaching you the single crochet stitch and the puff V stitch. And then how to work three rows and then offset it and then continue up. And then I'll show you how to end it off so it looks nice and smooth. So without further ado, let's begin. So you can see my hands even better. Let's zoom up the camera a little bit more. Okay. And as always, your first step is to make a slip knot. And then your next order of business is to create a chain of 56. So remember, quick review, wrap around, chain, wrap around, chain, two, three, four, and then go all the way to 10 and stop there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm going to show you a cool tip and trick that I learned on how to make sure that you avoid twisting your chain. Trace it back to your first loop, insert your hook in that chain, and then put the other loop back on top and continue chaining all the way till you have 56. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. And here's where, if you wanted to make your cowl bigger or smaller, you would have to add or subtract chains. So what you need to do is since this works in groups of nine from here, you need to add eight and then add another eight and another eight. I'm gonna keep mine just how it is. So I'm just gonna yarn over and join the two. And because of that trick that I showed you earlier, your chain's all ready to go. 
not twisted. So your next order of business is to begin row one. You'll begin that with a chain. And then in your first stitch right here, single crochet. And now you'll be single crocheting in the next four chains. One. So two. Three. Four. And five. And now you're going to learn the puff stitch for this pattern, which is a V. You're going to yarn over and skip your next chain, insert into your next, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, pull up a loop, then you're going to yarn over and pull through eight. And then yarn over and pull through your remaining two. And you've just done a puff stitch. Next, you're going to chain one to separate them and repeat into the same chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Again. A third time. And a fourth time. And then yarn over and pull through eight. Yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops on your hook. And this really does open up that chain, but that'll be hidden later on because it moves the puffs down. Then you're going to skip your next chain. And single crochet in the next five. Two. Three. Four. And five. And we're going to repeat that puff pattern again. We're going to yarn over, skip a stitch, insert into our next chain, and pull up nice and high. And please make sure to be loose here. And pull them up to the same height. That was my second repetition. My third. And my fourth. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through all eight. Just kind of wiggle your hook through. It can be a little fiddly. Pull through my final two. And chain one. And then repeat for my second puff stitch. Second, a third, and a fourth. And now, as usual, I'm going to skip my next stitch and continue with five single crochets. And then number five. And now if I take a break and analyze my work, you can see, of course, I have my chains on the back. And then right up front here, I have five single crochets, groups of five single crochets, and V stitches. V puff stitches, my bad. And you can see they're really coming out of the front of your work. And that's what you want. It adds that depth, that texture. It's so three-dimensional. It's crazy. You'll see what I'm talking about later on. But what you'll need to do is keep building... And repeating this repetition till the end of your row. And this is, of course, your starting chain. And this is the most common mistake people make of the cowl. They accidentally add another chain or skip one. If you do this chain correctly and all goes well, you don't skip any stitches, then you'll be pretty much set up for success for the cowl. Because... The way that this is constructed is by offsetting off of the first row. And you'll see what I mean later. Three. Four. Five. And now I'm repeating my puff stitch again. And later in the video, I'll speed it up so you can see how it progresses. But right now, I'm just taking you nice and slow through the first row because it's so important. Work my second puff. Four. Single crochet. Two. And then three. Four. Five. 
and then continue working your puff stitches. And make sure to keep your puff stitches all relatively the same size by pulling them up a nice distance and then repeating four times for nine loops on your hook in total. Two, three, four, so five. I'm almost done, so I'll just finish out my puff repetitions with you on camera. And I'm just going to speed up a little bit now. And now I've just done five. And if you did your math right and have the right amount of chains, You'll end your row on a puff V stitch. And then you'll be skipping your last chain and then slip stitching to your first single crochet. It's very important that you slip stitch and don't substitute to work in the round. Otherwise, you'll lose consistency of lining up on top of itself. Now, you can see my row. This goes all the way around with these puffs. And the second and third rows of this pattern will build on each other and make what you see as the braids here, where there's groups of three and then they offset. So what you're gonna do is chain up one, and in the next five stitches, just single crochet. Oh, that reminds me, I also wanted to reiterate, you will not turn your work once in this pattern. You'll just continuously work in around and slip stitch join. There's my next stitch, four right here and i'm actually going to show you that again because you want to be very careful to land in each stitch you're going to go with your first your second third your fourth and then your fifth and then you're going to see you're at your puff stitch so you're going to yarn over and make another puff stitch in the top of that chain one two three, four, and continue that puff pattern by chaining one and working another puff stitch the same way. And then single crochet in your next five stitches, just pulling it nice and down tight to the top. And then I'm at my puffs again, so I'm going to puff. And this is the same puff that you'll do for every stitch, every single row, all the way up. You'll always work it in groups to create that braided V. Three and four. And then slip stitch down three and then my fourth and then my fifth single crochet and you'll see how it's going to form they stack on top of each other and what you'll need to do is finish this row and then work a third row just like it coming out of the same puff stitches and then i'll meet you back here once you're completed with that okay i'm back and I finished my three puff rows. And what I'm next going to do is get you started on the next row. Stop. Let you do your three puff rows. And then the next. And then from that point, I'm just going to show you how to slip stitch right off. But you will, of course, continue to your desired height. So you, you of course, can tell how they offset. You have your first group right here, which you just completed. Then we're gonna offset it to right here, and then here, and then here, here, and so on and so forth. So you're always gonna offset it 
to the left middle of your next section. So you're going to start by chaining one and single crocheting into your first two stitches. And then you're going to skip a stitch. And in the next single crochet, do your normal V puff. Two, three, four, pull through eight, pull through the top two, and then skip the next single crochet right down here, and single crochet in the top of that puff stitch, the chain one space, and the next puff stitch, and the next two single crochets for five in total. This whole pattern. I cannot make this clear enough. We will work in sets of five single crochets and then your puff V. So next you're gonna skip your uh, single crochet, work your classic puff, which is the four yarn overs, pull through eight and then pull through your remaining two. Then of course, chain one and repeat. Then you're gonna skip your next single crochet and in the top of your V, single crochet, chain one space, single crochet, next puff, single crochet. So you'll have three single crochets over the top of your puff V. And then single crochet in the next two stitches. And repeat with your V puff. Chain one and pull up. And then remember, you're just going to work your three single crochets over the top of the puff V as normal. Two more. And then your another puff V. I I'm speeding up here because once you get into the rhythm, You'll see how easy this is, and you can just go so fast, and it's just... It's a really fun project to make, and like I said earlier, they make wonderful gifts. Also, great stash busters. Three, four, and five. And now I'm currently working another Puff V. Chain one and work the puff V. Two and three, four and five. And then work your next puff. And then we will almost be to the end of our row where you'll then get to see how this pattern is going to establish and you'll be off to the races. Four, stitch. We're going to work across the top three. Our next two stitches. Three, four, chain one, two, three, four, five, and finish off with three single crochets to the top. This is where you'll be needing to slip stitch again, and you've done your row. See how it's working? You have this added texture, and now you're just going to repeat what you have for this row by chaining up one, and then we're going to work two single crochets because that's what's available to us at the moment. And then, oh, we've made our puff stitch. So when there's a puff, we're going to puff. And then we're going to work our five single crochets. Five, 
five. Three. And then now I'm working my next V puff stitch. And as you can see now, you can already see how the pattern is going to form. So what you'll need to do is finish the row like so, like you have right now. And then meet me back here after you've done another row after that. So you'll have three puff rows. And then I'll show you how to do it offset one more time. And then we'll slip stitch it off. Okay. I'm back. And as you can see, all this gorgeous texture is coming through after row six. And our next row to offset, we're starting right out on a puff by chaining up one. And working a puff stitch into the same stitch. And then of course, because you always do your puff as a V, you're going to chain one. And puff through the rest of the stitches. Then you're going to single crochet in the next five. And then you're gonna puff stitch. Then you're gonna chain one and finish your V puff. Then work your five single crochets. And your next V puff stitch, two, three, four, four, and pull through for your V. And keep up that pattern until you reach the end of the round. And as you can see now, the texture is really fascinating because all three layers of puff stitches pop out. That's why it's so important to make all your puff stitches the same size. And to make sure that they're all pulled up nice and evenly and that they're not twisting around each other. Which is a common issue. I'll show you what I mean in the next puff stitch here. You want to pull it up straight. Pull it up straight so that they all align. Because sometimes people have their puff stitches and they're flipped around and not looking the prettiest. And my tip to you is pull it up to the same height each time. Make sure that they're all looking all straight and nice and neat in order. And they should slide right off your hook like butter and look absolutely perfect. Four five and as you can see this cowl works up super fast now we'll be finished with this row very quickly here two three four and then work through your third your fourth your fifth and then work your next puffs V stitch. Single crochet for the next top, through the th third, the fourth, and the fifth. And I'm at the end of the row, so I'm going to slip stitch right into the top of the next puff slip stitch into the chain one space then i'm going to chain one pull up my loop and begin to work a puff on top of my puff and like i said when you're doing your groups of three your row groups of three be consistent and making sure that you have five single crochets in between each puff stitch but you'll find it's really easy to maintain 
because you can just look down rows below and they'll let you be shifting over the, to the second single crochet to the right every single row. Now I'm going to work a few more of these puff stitches here before I send you off to do your final three for the rest of this row and then how to continue in this pattern. So here we go. Now you can see how this puff stitch is really establishing. It's very pretty, very nice and textured. And you'll need to repeat this row again for your stack of three. And then keep repeating the rows you've done before. So after you finish this row, do it again. And then come back down and start with that with five single crochets like you did for your first. Repeat for three puffs. Then go to two single crochets and repeat for three rows. Then just go back to puff in the first stitch and repeat for three rows. And you'll need to keep doing that until you have the number of rows of puff stitches that you want. For my pattern, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five puff braids, which then, of course, translates to five puffs. And then, of course, each puff group is made up of three rows. So mine will be 15 rows. And you can stop at 15 rows if you'd like, or take off three rows if you'd like to make it a cowl that's not as wide. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up my next couple rows and then meet you back here and show you how to do the slip stitching for the bind off. And the final step is to just chain one and slip stitch in every single stitch up and through each stitch going around the puffs going over the top making sure that you maintain a straight loop and also ensure that you maintain a very nice and loose tension and you will have to stop periodically and adjust where your project lays but what you need to do is just keep slip stitching And keep slip stitching all the way around. I'm just going to work some more slip stitches with you here. And then show you how your humps from the V puffs should have smooth, smoothed out. Slip stitch. You'll get the hang if we just maintain loose as you can see. Okay. And then once you finish and slip stitch back to your main base. This is the puff very smooth edge you'll have and then your final step is to finish off around slip stitch and boom you have your finished braided puff cowl and that is everything you need to know to make your very own braided puff stitch cowl and if you enjoyed this tutorial please make sure to subscribe like and comment on this video and also share it with another crocheter so we can all spread positivity around the world one stitch at a time. But also don't forget to check out my two books, Hello Crochet Friends, and of course my pattern book, Giving Back Crochet. Both are available for an autographed copy on my website. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Goodbye and crochet away, friends!